So, so I'm Benas Pirzamombin. Uh, I'm at the moment assistant professor in a statistic department at Lund University. Uh, last year when I submitted my uh, abstract, which is titled a study on bending of laminar packaging material from Tetra Pak, I was a postdoc at DTU and working in a Kim group. And uh, Kim stands for a Center for Quantification of the Images from Max4, is a collaboration between three universities, Lund University, Copenhagen, and DTU in Denmark, and uh, also funded by the uh, capital region of Denmark, uh, where uh, there we are a statistician working with the images that are acquired in Max4 or 3D Imaging Center at DTU. In this collaboration, which is uh, established under the LINX project in Denmark, which bring together the industrial uh, collaborator or researcher together with university, we work with the colleagues at the Tetra Pak and also 3D Imaging Center at DTU, where we acquire the data. Shortly, I give some motivation about why we did this study. Is now, as you said, we're moving from food itself to how to package the food and what are the challenges there. Uh, as uh, you might know, Tetra Pak is the largest uh, uh, food pr packaging company. They uh, create uh, or develop machines that they, filling machines that they can uh, produce uh, 40,000 uh, milk cartons per hour. And uh, to increase the capacity and quality of this packaging process, they are controlling and predicting the process through the uh, virtual uh, 3D models that uh, they have. And in order to have this uh, reliable virtual model, uh, it is important that you know the geometry of the product and how this geometry change when the product go, go under this process of bending in the machines. So in this study, we develop a pipeline to deduce information of how uh, different materials behave when they get bent. Uh, for example, uh, here it's different angles that we are looking at. And uh, this uh, uh, study can help uh, Tetra Pak to verify their uh, simulation methods so that they can design new products. Uh, up to the point that we've done this study, what Tetra Pak used to do, they uh, take the 2D images with the high uh, uh, fast speed cameras. And uh, uh, for this study, we uh, actually acquired data using X-ray uh, tomography and uh, created uh, 3D volumes that you can see one uh, in the video on the right side uh, that we can see uh, both inside the material and in 3D uh, space now rather than the 2D space. And uh, we had uh, four samples that we study in this uh, work. Uh, they, they are same material, but they have different properties. Uh, the crease line in this uh, uh, material are different. And also the uh, where, how do we bend them is different. It's either bend inward or outward the packaging material. Our colleagues at the 2D Imaging Center uh, develop uh, some clips that you can see on the top uh, images here so that we can bend the material a certain degree, 0, 45, 90, and 180, and they can be fixed so that all of them have the same angle when we uh, image them. The pixel size of the image you can see on the right side is of 4.2 micrometer. And you can also see the indicator of uh, the down here that this is around two millimeter of the uh, actual size that we see. So, so far I give some uh, short uh, motivation part and uh, how we, uh, what we actually uh, uh, have as a start point. Now we go to the statistical and uh, image analysis part of the, this work, which uh, me and my colleague work on. The goal of uh, this part was to identify different layers. First in this 3D volumes that we have now, we acquired through the X-ray. On the right side, you can see the uh, 2D slice of uh, different, um, uh, different angle, uh, zero degree, 45, 90, and 100 degree. And uh, the right side of this material that you can see these samples is the aluminum layer that is uh, quite a straight and uh, different from the background. So you can see it with eyes. And then on the left side is a clay, which is a bit harder to identify with eyes. Uh, after we identify this uh, two layer in the uh, process, uh, we want to obtain a quantitative measure to describe the delamination that has happened when we are bending in the center of the delamination, which you can see it more uh, easily in maybe 90 degree and 180 degree on the bottom two figures. And at the end, we want to also investigate the deformation process that how this uh, straight uh, uh, packages can, when they fold, what will happen to them. 
and how one pixel move between this uh, different angle. Uh, so as I said, we create a pipeline. In this pipeline, we are uh, to uh, fulfill the first goal that we had. We do a segmentation that we can find the uh, layers on the outer side and inner side, uh, where um, which was aluminium or clay. And then uh, we come, uh, we, we find uh, having that segmentation, we uh, measure the bend characteristic by defining a measure. And then finally using uh, the segmentation and doing some registration of different uh, samples we have in different degree, transforming them and aligning them, we can investigate the deformation process. In the next slides, I'm gonna go a bit more detail in different parts of this process, uh, starting with segmentation. So uh, we choose to uh, work with a, a segmentation method called uh, layer surface detection, which is good for the segmenting the train-like uh, images in 2D. So as you know, we, are, we want to find the layers. So this is perfect method for that. Uh, my, my, might be a question that why not other techniques or a simple like techniques like uh, thresholding because layer surface detection is a graph graph-based method, search method, which might be a bit more complex than thresholding. The reason is that even though we can, for example, as I mentioned already, we can find the aluminum layer pretty good and we might manage to get a good segmentation just by thresholding. There are other material like clay uh, inner, inner part of this um, bend that they have different uh, contrast in different parts. So some part of it is quite uh, obvious and by putting different values on thresholding, we can find them. But on the other side, for example, on uh, top part here, uh, it is really hard to capture it using a thresholding method. So we thought that this method uh, where we find the surfaces could fit the best. And I wanna show you that we were kind of right with that. So to do the layer surface detection, what we do, we uh, annotate this image around the area that we think the layer of interest is there. And then we sample uh, uh, around that area. Then we get the, this mesh that you can see on the picture, which is, uh, uh, for example, in this case, 180 degree bent. Uh, however, as I already mentioned, for the layer surface detection, we need the uh, 2D like a uh, image of the uh, like a train like that there you can see the lines so therefore we unwrap this uh, mesh into the 2D space by extrapolating and we get the uh, uh, this uh, top picture on the bottom which called unwrapped image now uh, this is 180 in the 3D uh, space, now it's uh, extrapolated to 2D space. We can uh, see even by eyes the different uh, surfaces of this layer on the top and the bottom. And using the cost function that you can define, uh, we uh, have also other, uh, other uh, properties in this model that we can define how many surfaces you are looking for and uh, how uh, smooth is this surface and how far from each other you, uh, you think this is gonna go so that you don't end in the area that there is totally wrong. By doing this, uh, we managed to segment uh, even the clay part, as you can see here, applying in this uh, to the, all the four samples in the 3D. We, come, uh, we, uh, we got the result, as you can see in the picture, uh, the zero degree, 45 degree, 180 and 90 degree. And on this image, the top purple colorish uh, um, surface is the aluminum, and the bottom one is the clay that we uh, segmented out. Now that we have the segmentation, we could do the measure. We define the measure as to be the Euclidean distance between the outer layer and inner layer in the image, where um, where it can show us that how the actual dispending process uh, characterized. Uh, if you look at the uh, images on the left side on the bottom, this is the, uh, where aluminum was the inner uh, part of the layer. And you can see that uh, the, it showed that uh, aluminum has clearly uh, formed a uh, delamination in the center of the crystalline in the material at the, from 90 degree go to 100 degree, it's quite obvious. And then also uh, in the other uh, material, uh, other material when the clay was the inner material, uh, we get uh, two different delamination uh, around the edges of this crease line. 
So in this way, we can characterize the uh, property of the material when we bend them and we can see how uh, measure how uh, they are different from each other. Another thing we needed to do was to uh, actually uh, follow, investigate this uh, deformation process. To do that, we need to, we had different samples. So, uh, and then uh, different samples, we had different bending angles. So we need to register this bending angle and align them so that we can follow one pixel from the zero degree and know where did it end in 45, 90 degree and also 108 degree. Uh, to, uh, to get this, we needed to do the registration between the uh, different angles. And uh, to do that, we, after we got the segmentation on the right image, you can see we sampled inward to the material so that we can use the property and the pattern exists in the fibers inside the material so that it can give us some signal that uh, how, the, uh, how to register two, uh, two images to each other. And uh, we use the 180 degree uh, as a reference point because it has the biggest field of the view and uh, zero degree, 45 degree and 90 degree all contain in it. To uh, make it a bit more maybe understandable, I now project them in this uh, um, like a 2D images. So again, as you see that because registration is uh, happening in the transfer is happening in 2D space, I, I again un unwrap the folded image into a straight image. And then uh, the one on the left is for the 90 degree and the one on the right is for 180 degree. And I, I try to show some part that is easy with eyes to see that they are similar. The method we use is a surf uh, registration method, which looks for the bubbles and also sharp edges. So for example, on the top uh, yellow uh, ellipsoid here on the left, there is a white bubble and there is a dark bubble on the other side of it, which we can also find that in the 180 uh, in the similar fashion. So then this tell us that this pixel is the sim same pixel and the 180 degree. We can find also other patterns uh, or similarity between the pixels in the lower part here and also in the uh, one on the left side. So now we got the transformation through the um, 2D uh, space, uh, which is uh, we got it from the uh, registration. And also because we are uh, unfolding the image from the 3D bent to 2D uh, surfaces, we have a Two, two, three, two different uh, transformation in this model. I try to put it here so that it's uh, visually easier to understand. So if we have the, uh, our, uh, bend, uh, our material in zero degree in 3D space, we transfer and we know in zero degree nothing changed, but for 45 and 180, it become on the surface. We extrapolate it to a 2D surface. There we can transform the different angles to each other so that we know exactly where the pixels are. And then we can also go back to the uh, 3D space again. So on the left here, you can see that, as I said, 118, the black or grayish color is a transparent, so it's become more gray. And uh, it's the biggest uh, surface area we had because of the field of view of the camera. And then uh, the green, red, and blue are the, um, the field of view we have for the outer layer of the material that is projected in 180 degree. And um, you can also see the difference in the size of the view here. So uh, to just get a conceptual point of view that what's happening from now is that uh, if I have a pixel in zero degree, now I can transfer it using the registration transfer to 180 degree. And then there I have the transformation uh, inverse to the, all the other angles that we had 45, 90 also. So I can move that pixel to the 45 degree space uh, in 2D plane and then to geometrically uh, transform it to the 3D plane and do the similar for 90 degree. And uh, we already talked about the 180 degree. In this way, we know now the, a, a, a pixel in zero degree, how where it is in the 45 degree. So we can actually follow this deformation when we bend the material. Uh, something to mention here is that as the field of view is not the same between these uh, angles, we might have some area that is exists in one angle is not in the other angle. So the final uh, uh, simulation process gonna be the intersection between this uh, field of view. Uh, so by 
after doing this, uh, I uh, do some alignment to remove any translation that exists when we take the images and we uh, choose to have that alignment on the most concave part of the bending mater bended material on the uh, outer layer. And uh, hopefully you can see the camera moving and this video that is showing the mesh. And I put it as a mesh, not the surface, uh, so that uh, all every of this uh, square is a representation of a pixel and you can follow them through different uh, bending now. And the final slide is going to be the final product where we did the interpolation now we, because we know where the pixels are. We did the interpolation between different bending angle and we can uh, simulate the bending process, the formation process. And then again here the top layer is aluminium, the lower layer is the clay and this is now 3D so you can see how actually the aluminium when is the inner layer bend and uh, it's as I mentioned already it's in the center of the crease line and it has a bit of a wave in it which before in 2D images was not possible to see. Say, saying this this was my last slide and uh, I just say thank you for listening and if there is any question. Uh, thank you very much for a, a fascinating uh, talk. Uh, so, so, uh, so, how do, how do you see the this is this packing? What do you see as the main challenges with the packing material? Is is it the mechanical uh, sort of uh, things uh, effect on the structure, or is it more of a, a chemical? You are now the expert of packaging, so. <laughs> Uh, I, I would say that I'm not the expert there. I'm more of a statistician who try to uh, in, like deduce information based on like a mathematical equations uh, out of the images we get. Uh, what I what I would uh, say here is that uh, we see that the different material behave differently. So uh, if, for example, for the next aspect, could be nice to actually try to uh, cl classify the material based on this uh, characteristic. And uh, this can also help, uh, for example, companies like Tetra Pak that come up with new designs so that they can, uh, they can come up with more stable packages or uh, different design of the packages. Uh, and uh, this is also, as I understand it, quite expensive for putting the product in, into the production line before you actually know what you get. So all this work has been put to understand the process before we actually go to the uh, like a production so that we don't need to produce 40,000 packages to know what will happen to the material. So can you apply the same modeling to, to food for look into how, how you bend when you chew a leaf or something like that? In principle, uh, your modeling should be, have, have, have you thought of that? Or? Uh, I would say uh, if we can take the images, uh, yes, we can deduce information from them and uh, depends on the quality of the images and the contrast we get. Uh, here, what you see is actually what you saw all the slides. Uh, it was yeah. contrast enhanced. So we do different techniques to get the best out of the images produced in uh, synchrotrons or uh, like X-ray in the labs uh, so that we can uh, get information out of the images we have. Right. So, uh, I, I, I should say also that uh, one of the uh, goal we have in Kim is that people, when they take the images, they get information out of it. It's not just a 3D nice uh, like yeah, a, yeah, I a, a image. We can also get the statistic out of it, so we can do some calculation and quantification. Yeah. Okay. V very, very much. Very much. Uh, thank you for this uh, insight. So. Thank so, you very much.